Hey PPLD makers, uh, my name is Jennifer and today we'll be talking about visible mending. Now visible mending is basically just what it sounds like. We'll be taking garments that have worn out with holes and stains and other damage and fixing them in ways that not only make them wearable again, but also add some flair and color to your wardrobe. So we've included a few materials in your take and make kit to get you started. Uh, the first one is a really basic sewing kit that has a needle and some thread um, that can help you close up some of those small tears or holes and sew on patches. Um, some embroidery thread for the kind of fun parts for adding decorative stitching. And a couple recycled denim and fabric patches to get you started. We've also included a piece of tailor's chalk um, which can be used on your fabric to mark straight lines or denote where a pattern should go. So there are a few things that I think about when I embark on a mending project. The first one is, is it salvageable? I have some clothes that I wear just to the brink of destruction um, and some of them are not really salvageable, um, but they could be useful for other things like making patches to um, mend up other clothes. Um, is it important? Um, do I have a hard time finding clothes that fit me the same way as this does? Does it have memories or nostalgia attached to it that I'd like to keep? And lastly, is it practical? So if you're mending for children, you probably want to think about how they will wear out their clothes in the future. Um, is this project worth your time to start and complete? Um, as you incorporate mending into your wardrobe, you should also start to get a feel for what kind of items and fabrics mend up better, um, which might help you start thinking long term about the clothes that you buy. So is this something that will be suited to mending later? Will I want to wear this for as long as I can? Um, mending it up with a little bit of TLC. So once you've kind of thought about the big picture of your items and evaluated that way, um, you kind of want to start thinking about your the garment itself. Um, so what materials is it made of? Is it cotton or denim or something more delicate like cashmere? Those are all going to inform how you take care of your project in the future. Um, where are the holes and stains located? So what is the visibility of what you're looking at? How will it sit on your body? Um, and also things like how does it fit? Um, if you're mending a knee, for example, you might want it to have a little bit more stretch um, than just say like the collar of your shirt. I'm gonna show you a few examples on some garments that I've mended up myself. I'm not gonna go in too much detail about how to do these because I'm going to link to some resources um, on a libguide that's linked below as well as in some videos that I've linked below as well. But the first one that I'd like to cover is called darning. Um, and if you're familiar with the term darning, term darning um, you might think of things like mending up socks and sweaters. It's really commonly used for knitted items. Um, but basically what you're doing is creating a patch using weaving techniques. So you'll see on the sleeve of this jean jacket here, I have done a darning patch. Um, the pink threads um, I sewed on vertically and then I went through and wove horizontally with the yellow threads that you see here. And so that makes a little patch like that. I did this kind of on an elbow on kind of a big hole, um, and I might not repeat that if I did it again in the future, um, but it is nice for you to see what that can look like on kind of a large scale. Uh, the next one that you might think about doing is um, patching and sashiko stitching. So there's a great video on sashiko stitching linked um, in the description, but basically what that is is it's patching combined with decorative stitches. So it works great for things like jeans um, and jean jackets, but you'll see that I have sewed on a patch under here. You can see the darker denim showing through these holes. Um, the yellow thread is just what I used to tack down the patch while I was sewing, um, but I went over the top with the pink threads in kind of a really simple design that still kind of stands out because of the contrasting color of the patch and the contrasting color of the stitching. Um, but if you need reinforcement, this is a great thing. Um, this is a really worn out sleeve and a really worn out jacket in general. Um, so I was able to put on a big patch and even though there's not holes on all of this, there's parts of it that are really worn out and would probably become a hole soon. So this helped me kind of reinforce the sleeve um, as well. The next technique that you might consider is embroidery. Um, embroidery can be great for adding decoration to patches or covering small stains or small holes. Um, and it gives you a lot of creative possibilities. Um, I have an example here of a t-shirt, a concert t-shirt that I got, so I really wanted to save it. Um, it had a small hole on the neckline. Um, so this is like the neckline of the shirt. 
there was only a small hole on one part of it. Um, so I mended up the hole. I sewed it together with kind of a matching thread. But then I went around the whole neckline and added these yellow stitches in that kind of match the design of the shirt. Um, but it wasn't really necessary for me to do the whole neckline, but I figured if there's a hole in one spot of it, um, there might be another hole that comes up in the future. So this also did kind of reinforce it as well and adds a little personal touch to a t-shirt that probably a lot of people got from that concert. Another example of embroidery that I have here um, is back on the jean jacket. So I have a couple areas where I had holes. And what I did is I actually just cut the remaining fabric out of those holes and embroidered all around the holes. So instead of trying to cover up the hole, I just embraced it. Um, and I also did some decorative kind of embroidery stitching around the holes as well. So that's another option that you can consider as you move forward. And while I don't have an example of my last technique, um, you can also use a sewing machine to mend things up. Um, it really could speed up the process, it can offer you a lot of strong reinforcement, and also if you have some more decorative stitches on your machine, um, that could help you add a little flair as well. Um, if you don't have a sewing machine, um, you can make an appointment at our Makerspace. Um, but basically you would probably just end up using a patch like you would on lots of other mending and then just sewing it over in the stitch of your choice and in the color of your choice um, to make that unique visible mend. So just a few things to consider as you move forward. When you're um, adding in patches and things like that or darning, make sure that you are connecting your mend to a strong piece of fabric. So like this example I had of my sashiko stitching, um, there are places on here that are worn out. So I made sure to connect my patch higher up than those spaces so that it would stay stable as I continue to wear this item. You can also think about what other techniques you can incorporate into your mending project. I've just covered a few pretty basic ones, um, but if you're interested in other handicrafts, you might think of ways to incorporate those as well. So if you like cross stitching, maybe you can cross stitch a patch to add to your garment. Um, if you're a needle felter and mending a wool sweater, you might be able to needle felt a patch onto that sweater um, if it has the right materials. You could also make patches out of patchwork if you're a quilter and things like that. So there are lots of possibilities, so just make sure to work to your skills and your personal style. Lastly, I want to say that we've included some really basic tools um, in your kit that you've got here. Um, and there are lots of other tools that are out there that can help you with your mending projects, um, including just the things like embroidery hoops, but also darning mushrooms or darning eggs or darning machines. And while these things can all be really helpful, they're not required. Um, I did a darn on this jean jacket and I did not have a darning egg or mushroom. So what I did was just used a bowl to kind of keep my fabric taut and I secured it with a hair tie. So there are lots of workarounds that you can do. You don't have to have all of the supplies that you might see when you're researching this topic online. Um, it's okay to get creative. So I've linked some resources um, in the description of this video, um, including a libguide where we have lots of resources on mending in general, as well as some of the visible mending techniques that I've talked about in this video. Um, and there's also a book list linked there um, if you're interested in checking out some books or other materials from the library on this topic. We have lots of good options there as well. Um, moving forward, if you'd like to use a sewing machine um, or other machines to um, support your creative projects, um, we do have um, sewing machines available in our makerspaces at Library 21C, the East Library, and the Sand Creek Library. Um, they all have sewing machines and embroidery machines, um, as well as sergers. Um, we also have other machines like 3D printers, so if you don't have a darning mushroom, there are patterns out there to help you 3D print a darning mushroom. Um, there's reservations and things like that required right now, um, but there's links in the description to help you uh, learn more about that. So now pick out one of your items of clothing. Um, think about the things that we've talked about so far. Uh, choose the mending style that you think is gonna work best and start sewing. Uh, if you share your finished mends on social media, be sure to tag us with hashtag PPLD take and make and we'd love to see your projects. Thanks so much for watching this video and happy mending.